So I want to close with this final thought about Christmas. All right. And that's that. Uh, if, we, if we look to the biblical account of the birth of Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. That's how Luke's narrative about the birth of Christ begins with a demagogue politician scheme to more effectively tax his subjects, right? It's <laughs> <laughs> the reason that they have a, a census is so he can find out just how many people owe him a nickel. <laughs> Caesar Augustus, Gaius Octavius, the first emperor of the Roman Empire. He was the most powerful man in the world, and he was known as both a god and as the adopted son of Julius Caesar, as the son of a god. He ushered in the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, and was known as the Prince of Peace. From his throne in the most glorious city on earth, this god king of the lowercase g, lowercase k <laughs> variety, would have been wholly unaware that in distant and backward Palestine, the god of the uppercase g was tinting himself in human form, condescending to be born into the world as the only begotten of the Father, through whom he would adopt unto himself many sons and daughters, as many as there are stars in the sky. The prince of peace between God and man had no throne, but instead slept in a feeding trough for beasts of burden who were his roommates, there being no room for him in the familial home, probably because his parents were being shunned by their kin for the stigma of carrying him in contravention of religious ideals in the first place. Prophecy had declared centuries earlier that the Christ would be born in Bethlehem, but without the machinations of the lowercase g God King in Rome to make himself even richer, the prophecy would not have been fulfilled, just as without the roads that that same lowercase God King built to more effectively gather his taxes, Christ's gospel would not have spread after his death. None of this, of course, happened in December. That was the affect of yet another lowercase g, lowercase k, muckety-muck, sometime about 1,500 years later. The Bishop of Rome, <laughs> in an effort to co-opt one of the most popular and universal holidays of the pagan world, the winter solstice, saw a correlation between the celebration of life from death that agrarian societies marked on the shortest day of the year in the dead of winter with evergreen trees and mistletoe and merrymaking of the uh, uh, in-the-tent kind. Uh, and the concept of eternal life, being literally born into a world of sin and death to rescue us from darkness to light. So while we're all busy trying to get Christ back into Christmas, it's worth remembering that he was never actually there at all. But so what? The uppercase G, uppercase K God King has been making good use of us scheming, conniving, self-serving, self-serving lowercase G, lowercase Ks since way back in the beginning, revealing his truth and his grace and his life through many a flawed vessel, and that's a truth worth celebrating in December and every other month. So, Merry Christmas to all of you from us here at The Daily Wire. He's not here, of course. He's risen. Uh, but now's as good a time as any to think about him. Good night. I disagree with, like, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>